Hi, I'm Coach Curley. In this episode, you're going to meet young Nick. I say young, he's 47, 48 years old, something like that. He's a fourth generation farmer dealing with selling the farm, moving off the land, all of the emotional issues that go with that. This stuff's gold. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Coach Curley. Today, I'm here with Nick. How you going, mate? Very well, thanks, Paul. Beauty. What do you want to work on today? Well, we've just sold the farm after uh, four generations at home and, and uh, I don't think my dad's ever going to forgive me for yep. it, um, even though he says he does. Yep. But uh, there's, a, there's a certain kind of b- guilt that's wrapped up in that, yet the, the freedom of that and, and the next uh, career that, that I'm uh-huh. launching on, which I'm not really sure <laughs> where that's going, yep. is kind of ex- exciting but frightening. I'll have to work on it with my father and my mother for quite a long time, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're really comfortable with it. And, and as I say, we, my wife and I, the family. And, and uh, yet it comes up as a, a hoary chestnut in nearly every conversation. Yep. And uh, it's, it's a little wearing, yet I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. I say I'm cool. Do so I look cool? <laughs> I don't know. But it, so ultimate you're, ultimately, you've got your plan in place and you're following it. Yep. But the thing you want to deal with is how to handle your mum and dad or... Well, it's... So, or is it something else? They're a sideline. I think, I think they think I've got no idea how to handle my money. We didn't sell the farm because we had to, but it was, a, it was a train screaming towards a cliff. We had to turn it around and stop it. And the debt yep. was too high. Uh, I'm not going to tell them anything about what debt they left us or, yeah. or how we managed it. Um, but we got away with uh, with you know, some of our equity and, yeah. and our health and our lives and our family, and, and we're good. Um, I suppose the reason I'm having trouble with my next career is I'm don't, I don't really trust myself in what I'm going to do with that money, you know, the, uh-huh. the residual. Yep. And and if I if I blow it completely dad will be right won't he yep um and that's a serious fear whether yeah, he says so or not it's a ser- it's a serious fear uh just of me looking in the mirror i suppose yep. uh, and my, my, it's a weird thing family farms because you, you your partner in the business is, is often your parent or your your son yeah. uh it's expected that you'll just carry it on in perpetuity uh and and everyone comments about the fellow that lost his farm you know look at him he was it up against the wall or whatever yeah. uh, and we all comment and judge on on uh, other people's business then yeah. when it comes to being you yeah, yeah uh, there's all sorts of comments and judges made about it doesn't matter as a farm as any business you know yeah. but our farm is now the, the spot in the spotlight yeah. at the sale and the clearing sale and everything uh, people come and pick over your, your entire <laughs> life and bid on it go through <laughs> your life with a fine tooth comb and bid on it yeah. okay so um do you know what you want to do or are you in that state where it hasn't become clear yet? It's not clear and I'd, I'd kind of be happy with, with anything, probably uh, taking stress out of it or t- taking, taking the high risk out of it that I've been used to for the last 20 years uh, and maybe doing it for somebody else yep. um, and ultimately uh, maybe down, downsizing or scaling down and uh, in some role of consultancy and motivation of here's the irony of it I'd like to motivate people to stay on the land I reckon it's a really (laughs) (laughs) good thing (laughs) but here's me quitting you know yeah Uh, and I'll I'll, well I'll just go to another bit of land and maybe it'll be somebody else's and maybe it'll be mine but uh, uh, what I'm going to do really has not materialised it's just not obvious right what have you done in the past or have you always been a farmer I've always been a farmer. Okay. All right. So big problem is that at what age? How old are you now? 47. 47. Having had one career all your life that probably started when you were nine or 10. Mm-hmm. Um, the big issue is what is the next career? And what most people do is go straight into the next thing without a gap. So I, I ran a program one time with the government for women in domestic violence and um, the government ran half the program and I ran half, it was all mixed up and uh, away we went. And the key ingredient was that the program was 12 Tuesday nights in a row and the rules from the government were 
for these people, they were not allowed to be in a relationship while the program was on. And if they did get into a relationship during the 12 weeks, we'd chuck them off the program. And the government being the government, at the end of the gig, we had to evaluate whether that program had been successful or not. And the evaluation proved that what had come from the government side was absolutely useless and what had come from my side was absolutely useless. And the only thing that worked was the 12-week gap. So here's what I'm going to suggest, all right? Now, I'm not qualified to give you financial advice. Get the money that you come out of the gig with and stick it somewhere safe, not too spectacular, and take some time out and don't do anything. Do not get involved in a business venture, no matter how good it is or how good it looks. And trust me, mate, they all look better than they actually are. Show me the, show me the business opportunity that actually performs according to expectations and I'll show you a miracle. <laughs> so, you need time. Absolutely. More uh, than anything, you need time, and you'd be better off pulling beers in a pub to pay the weekly bills than to do anything significant, especially anything that ties up your money. Yep. I'm really interested in... in uh, I'd like to stand back from me for the next period like a year or so yeah yeah and and watch them more for uh, as as you sort of come out of your your farming straight jacket yes <laughs> and, and take off your moleskins and and get into yeah. a pair of board shorts or something yeah uh, it, it'd be interesting but it's to say it's uh not scary it'd be a lie because yeah. it, it really is i can understand how people feel when they when they've lost their job and booted out of something and they've had, they've been in that I, I i chose to do this but it's uh it's scary and people yeah. tell you a whole lot of stuff. Well, so you see, our work is how we mostly generate self-worth. Yep. So when I do something that I look at and I say, that is a good thing, I get brownie points for myself. Yep. When I was a school teacher, seeing, seeing a child benefit by my effort, you know, sure, I was getting my salary, but really the thing that builds self-esteem is when I do something that in my estimation is a good thing so if I do a thing that's a bad thing my self-esteem suffers yeah. so the easiest thing to get into is work because it feeds you in terms of self-esteem yeah. now I've farming clients at the moment funny you should mention board shorts I know two couples who are going through exactly this thing and they've bought a big catamaran, but they've bought it on a two-year lease. In other words, they own it for two years, and it goes back to the owner. Yeah. And for the first year, one couple get on this boat and they sail it up and down the east coast of Australia. And then, then they get off and the other couple get on. And they're going to take care of each other's farms while that's happening. Yeah. Now, the purpose for that is, if you're on a boat, you can't go farming. <laughs> no. Got it? <laughs> It is important that you kind of make some things get out of reach for the moment. Yep. And therefore, I would recommend, even though I'm not allowed to say this, it's illegal for me to say this. Just go right ahead. Tie your money up in a fixed deposit kind of thing. Yep. So that you can't get it. I've seen too many people in this set of circumstances go, yeah, but we've got the money tied up, but you know what? The engine blew up in the car, so we had to fix it, otherwise we couldn't get around. Mm. And so a couple of thousand goes out to fix the motor in the car, and a year or two down the track, they're going, guess what? It's all vanished and we've got nowhere and we've done nothing, And because they were just treading water. They weren't looking at it as a spiritual adventure, which is what it is. Yep. So had we had the time in our culture, we'd have grabbed you around about puberty, and said, go off and sit on a hill and decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. And if it takes you six months to figure it out, come back and then we'll teach you what you need to know to do that. You might have come back and said, I want to be a doctor or a, I want to be a nurse or I want to be a boat builder or whatever. Well, whatever you want to do, you'd have to learn the skills to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you go back a few hundred years, our culture would support you in learning that because then if you're going to be a boat builder, we get to use the boats. Yep. So now we've got a culture where it's all done for money. Yeah. So there's no mutual support in the whole thing. Therefore, there's no ability to take 
you when you're deciding on the direction of your life and give you the space to figure out what you want to do. Yep. There's just, no, get on with it, mate. And yeah. in your case, an expectation probably from before you were born that this is what you would do. Yeah. So that's going to take some time. And yeah, the, it should be scary and exciting. I got that bit right then. 